Hi, I'm John Salenza, and I'm one of the developers here at Weather Underground. And today I want to help, help everyone along in transitioning to the new Wonder Map. The new Wonder Map is a very powerful tool, and it has a lot of features. But the seems to be the hardest thing for people is just to get into the new Wonder Map and be able to do all the things they were doing before. So right now I'm showing what the Wonder Map looked like to me when I first pulled it up today. There's a big storm over Chicago, and... That's a pretty exciting day to show off Wonder Map, so this is a good day to do it. The most common thing you're going to want to do is play the radar animation. It's what everyone's always wanted to do. So we tried to make this work better even today. And now, when you hit this play button down here, you don't have to touch any of the time bar down here. Just hit the play button. And it should animate much more smoothly today and only animate the last hour. A lot of folks mentioned that it wasn't very very usable to animate four hours because of the length of the animation would be so long. So now I'm only animating an hour. One of the neat things here is you can zoom in and pan around and the animation keeps going. And at the same time, these are the response of the radar system is much faster now, especially when you're zoomed out. And uh, that makes it a lot easier to use. We've also upgraded the rain snow line algorithm. So what happens if this doesn't happen for you? It just isn't working to start off with. One of the big tips I want to show everybody is if you hold shift and hit the reload button on your browser, that reloads the freshest software from our system and makes sure that your browser isn't caching any of our JavaScript. And that basically means you're going to get the freshest version of the, of, of the software and hopefully won't have any bugs or any weird things going on. And again, hit the play right away. It just works. So that's how it should be for you. And if it's not that way, write us in support and, and help us by being specific about you know, what didn't work. Another thing I want to show you, so if I hit stop, down here, this is my play indicator, and I'm going to talk about the time bar now. The most common thing you want to do is be at now. So this button is very important. Anything not working, something's not showing up on the map, most likely it's because you haven't hit the now button. Plenty of our features go back in time, but many of them don't, and things like the radar-derived storms only show up on the newest frame right now, and we're working on that, making it show up in the past, but right now it only shows up at now, so if I go into the past, they're going to disappear. So you always have to remember to hit that now button. Let me talk a little bit more about the timeline. On the timeline, this first bar shows the animation range. And so what this is saying is that I'm animating from 3.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time all the way to about 4.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can put your mouse anywhere in here and it'll jump to that time. Now, the first thing you might say is, well, geez, that's not very much time. And what happens if I want to go in the future or in the past? And to control how much time is in the animation bar, you, can tr you use this widget down here, and this is called the scrubber. And I can select more time in the past and more time in the future, and now this will jump much farther into the past each time I click. And there should be a frame per hour when you go into the distant past, and then if you go into the more recent past, there's a frame every six minutes. And so that's how I can move through a much longer time period and then I can actually go into the future and see the radar and what it's, we predict the radar to be in the future, and that works for the next six hours. And that's a new feature that we've just been able to launch. Another thing is, let's say you wanted to look at data on the time bar for a much longer period of time. Well, you can always grab the scrubber and go back you know, to the beginning of today, and that might not be sufficient for you. So this is a harder control to see at the bottom here, but this is the zoom control. And if I move it down, I can actually pull up radar for the last five days and just click in here. And there's the radar on the 16th in the middle of the day, 17th in the middle of the day. So this is a little bit more of how to use this time bar. I know that um, to me this is the hardest thing about the map is to use the time bar. And uh, we tried really hard to make it easy, but it's just really hard to convey. Um, and and uh, so hopefully this has helped. And the satellite layer also has data going back through all this, 
this time. So it's really quite neat, you know, once it once you start to get the hang of how to make it all work. So I'm going to hit the Magic Now button again, and I'm going to zoom back into time here to be much more about what I'm looking at today. And I'm going to hit Now again, because it seemed to do something strange there. And again, it, you know, this system isn't quite perfect, and uh, we've been just working very hard to make it as good as we can. And we wanted to get it out so that we could get some feedback and really improve it more and more over time. Let me show you something else that's uh, missed often, and and I want to make sure people know it's there. Let's say I have radar storm, uh, storm tracks on. Well, remember that on this side there used to be these lists, these data table lists, and they went away. Notice you can't get them anymore, but they're actually over here. Here's all the storms I'm tracking right now. So. If I was also, let's say we're zooming into Chicago, and I wanted to look at the weather stations in Chicago. Zoom way in. Here's the weather stations. Again, they're in this list. That's where the list went. So a lot of people said, where did all these lists go? Well, they, they're, they're actually over here, and they're a little bit easier to use now. But um, it, it, it's just, you don't look over here, and I realize, and, and, and we tried our best to, to deal with that situation. Same thing with the hurricane layer. If, there are no storms right now, but if I go in the past, maybe I can find some storms. If I type in Hurricane Katrina. There we go. So there's Hurricane Katrina. And if I click this button, I can also see all the other storms that were going on at the same time as Hurricane Katrina. So again, this, this icon tray up here is, is very powerful, and you'll notice almost every layer has some sort of feature inside the icon tray. So uh, make sure you take a note of that. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about to, in, in an effort not to make this video too long and to get the, the, most, you know, the most difficult things people have had to deal with out of the way, um, this button is magic. Everyone says, you know, the right bar is taking up too much space, and how do I make the layers disappear and, and, and the trips disappear or the legends disappear? Well, you hit this button over here, and you get a lot more screen space back. And I have to do that, too, because I use a laptop at home, and, and uh, the map is hard to use, you know, when you have all this space taken up. But um, just make sure you uh, notice that, that, you can, um, that you can hide that. I'm going to go back to Chicago, Illinois, and leave us on a pretty picture of rain changing to snow in Chicago on this very stormy night. Thank you for tuning in.